Well, hi there, YouTube. More questions answered. So thanks again to everyone who wrote down a little question on my original Q&A video. Love you all, you rock my world. Um, and it turns out it had an amazing response. So I've got lots to answer. Every now and then I'll try and make another one of these videos and continue. So we are down to Bob Batty. I like you already. Um, hi, Chez. How do you get gigs playing with house DJs? Are there agents who book sax players? I'm in Ireland, thanks. Let's just hit like on that. Uh, yes, uh, the house stuff. So uh, annoyingly, that's very much a network thing. So how would I have got my first one? Uh, someone would have recommended me. So I guess uh, maybe, I mean, the first thing I would say, <laughs> is say yes to every gig. That's one of my biggest pieces of advice if you're trying to get out there, um, is just keep yourself really, really busy. So I would have done something for free or something for like 50 quid here or there originally, and then my name got passed on and then my name got passed on and before you know it, you're charging 300 quid, you know, like, it, it, that's it's just a networking thing. So if you do well at one gig, you'll inevitably get passed on to another one. I'm sorry that isn't really, there isn't really a quick fix. I do do some agency stuff, but um, I would say a good 75% 70, of my work is just through buddies who want to work with me. Uh, next question is Deborah Allen. Hi, do you still have Beatrix? And if so, can I see her? Sorry, a bit cat mad here. Ha ha, your channel is great too. Oh, Deborah. okay, so sad story. Um, uh, Beatrix still exists, but she is no longer with me. I lost her in the divorce. It's so, so sad. Um, so there was Beatrix, there was actually Gulliver as well, Beatrix and Gully, although Gully was a little bit more camera shy. Um, and they were just all of the awesome. I loved those cats so much. But uh, sadly, so did my hideous ex. And I, after we split, I had a lot of earning to do because it turns out getting divorced is really, really freaking expensive. So, uh, so I was working an awful lot. I was abroad an awful lot. And just, you know, my poor flatmate was looking after these cats that she never particularly wanted. So she kind of inherited them. And eventually, you know, I had a word with her and I said, would it be better for you if I got rid of them? And she was like, yeah, that would be great. So, um, especially when she started staying with her boyfriend a lot more. Anyway, I gave them back to the hideous ex who adores them and they are very, very loved. And I can't wait to get another cat one day when I'm in the country a bit more. That would be so wonderful. And I, it breaks my heart. And Beatrix was just the best ever. She did tricks. She used to be able to do high five. It was the coolest thing ever. But yeah, thank you for asking about her. And that's so sweet that you've watched that far back in my videos. But a while ago, we had to give up. Beatrix, ah! let's move on before I start crying. Uh, Lucy Play. Play, play, play. Lucy Play. Uh, how long did it take you to become a pro at the sax? Well, I wouldn't say, well, I suppose I'm professional in that people pay me money to do it. But, uh, you know, I'm still learning. You never stop learning. Uh, I have been playing the sax for two decades. Uh, so yeah, it's not gonna happen overnight. And I'm one of those people, I'm not patient. I'm not a patient person at all. I recently wanted to learn how to do a headstand and I decided that if I tried every day for a month, I would do it. And I did, I guess, but that's just a headstand. Um, so yes, two decades to get to the place I am now and I don't really practice enough as much as I should. You could get there quicker, but uh, it, it's a slow process. Just go every day and be happy with the progress that you've made. Uh, okay, what do you look for when uh, buying a new sax? Ah, Rahan Patel. Okay, so new saxes uh, was well, a big investment for so it's a lot of money. So you don't want to get it wrong. Uh, you want the instrument that suits you. So don't just go, for God's sake, don't just go for the one that looks prettiest. So these ones that are unlacquered or black or silver or like brassy colored copper ones. Try not to look at the how it, how it comes across visually. Um, tr it's harder to do than you think. Uh, listen to the sound because that's gonna be your the equivalent of your voice. So you might absolutely really bond with one that's a little bit more mellow or one that's brighter and has a bit more punch to it. Uh, make sure you take 
your mouthpiece along that you're comfortable using and maybe a number of reeds as well because different sexes work differently so you might find one that's really really bright and sort of it makes you want to move away from it whereas actually if you used a harder reed on that sax that sound is perfect for you so when you go to try some saxes take your mouthpiece take a couple of varying different pieces that you play maybe something that's slow and something that's a bit more dexterous and take a couple two or three different reeds soft and hard uh, then you want to be looking at how easy it is to get the low notes out um, how easy it is to get the top tones out uh, and how easy it is to move around quickly. Is it nimble? How's the action on it? Uh, and then the last thing you want to look at is how easy is it to keep in tune for you? And then almost overlooking all of those points, you then want to think, well, what do I think of the sound? So maybe give these categories like marks out of 10. So tuning, ah, oh, well, it was a bit of a three out of 10, out of 10 but I love the sound so much that I'm willing to work on my tuning or oh, I don't feel like, it feels a bit cumbersome, I don't feel like I can move as fast as, a, as maybe this sax, but I love the mellow tone, so I'm gonna work on my finger work. So give them all marks out of 10 and see which one's right for you. You could even give it a mark on its appearance as well if you wanted to, but try not to. David Flynn. Oh gosh, it just says over two months ago. Oh. David, I'm sorry, I haven't got back to you yet. I am now, and thank you so much for writing. So, hi Chess, thanks for the great videos. I have an old and cheap sax. I, I love that it's got decades of history behind it, even if I don't know its history. <laughs> okay, uh, it's fun to imagine though. The problem is tuning. Okay, just as we were saying. When I bought it, the guy that sold it said it was a good sax. Okay, so skimming through, this is quite a long one. Um, Basically, okay, so you've bought an old vintage sax and it's got some real issues with tuning and, and David's asking, is it something he could learn to overcome or is it something where he will just have to get a new sax in the end? Well, hmm, uh, it's kind of like having a lovely vintage car. Like, it is beautiful, but you're not going to race the Grand Prix in it, are you? You know? Um, it, it depends what you want to do with it. If you're very keen to play with others and to join big bands in particular, so anything where you're playing with other sax players, you're in direct comparison, it might do you a disservice. And people aren't sympathetic to your saxophone, you know, like they, they just need someone who's gonna turn up and play. So I know lots of people that have these beautiful Mark VI Selmers, that's kind of the thing in London. I don't know whether it's the same in, in let's say, America. I know I've got a lot of American followers in Australia. Uh, in London, the the sax to have seems to be Mark VI, but they're such a pain in the butt. Like, there's loads of stuff goes wrong with them. They're, things fall off them all the time, and they're really hideous for tuning. So yeah, they've got a nice tone, but for me, I just kind of want one that works. Completely my opinion. Oh, I just hit the mic, sorry. Completely my opinion. <laughs> but um, I would say, you know, if it's a beautiful horn and you enjoy playing it, then maybe it's worth investing in a kind of intermediate one that uh, just does the job as well for if you want to play with other people, something like a Trevor James or something like that. I hope that's helpful. Uh, I'm going to do a couple more and then call it a day, I think. So we've got um, Judex Jasmine. Oh, you sound like a rock star. Love it. Uh, would like to understand chord progression, especially the blues. How do you remember the fourths, fifths, etc.? Oh, I see what you mean. You'd like to be able to improvise over chord changes. I think that's what you're asking me. I have actually done a video uh, on that, so I'll link to that in the description box. Um, I think... Uh, yeah, you, you've got to basically marry up the scale that goes with each chord um, and it just gives you a much more all-round solo and it means that you, um, you don't end up with all these clashing notes that don't match the chord that's going on with the piano. So, well, not necessarily piano, your harmony instrument. Um, Judex, I'm going to do another video on chord progressions with a bit more information because I did whiz through that for that improv video. So hold fire on that one. I'm going to get back to you with a bit more information, but in the meantime, I'll just cross-reference that video in the in the com description box for this, so check that out coming your way soon. Last one from Tambor76. Favourite fan Halem frontman, David Lee Roth or Sammy Hager? Okay, David Lee Roth, ofs. Right, I'm going to stop there. Uh, 
Thank you so much for all your questions. I love you all, you rock my world. Follow me on Twitter, I'm on Instagram as well if you like the Pikachus. And I will see you in the next Question Time video. Until then, sayonara guys, bye. So I am serious about this subscribing thing. Do it, or I'll drop you back. I will, I will, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll... <gasps>